Mods or multiplexers, they are components that help us to design circuits in a way that we have a special input called selector, and this input will select which ones of the other inputs it's going to be the final output. Like my selector will decide if I want this input as my final output or if I want this one or whether of the options that I have within all my inputs. But we cannot have an arbitrary number of inputs. These inputs will depend in the size of our selector. If our selector is of one bit, then we will have two input options right here. If our selector is of four bits, we will have two to the four inputs that we can. So if our selector is of two bits, we have two to the power of two, that makes us four inputs, which is this example right here. We have four inputs, so that means that our selector, that's its an input, it's of two bits. So let's see an example of, of how this works. We have this truth table, and we want to use a max to implement this truth table. So we are, we are now gonna select our selector input. Let's say that our selector inputs are our three unique inputs. This means that we are going to have three inputs as as the input that we'll select our other options of inputs that's going to be the final output. So how are we going to implement this is that in our truth table, we will see the different combinations that we have using our three options. So our first combination, it's zero, zero, zero. So in this case, I'm implementing the max for the different output. So we say that the zero, zero, zero combination, the output is zero. So in that case, we're going to make the output zero. The, the order of the inputs that can be the outputs are from zero, starting here, and to the n numbers of inputs that we can. So in this next line, that it's the combination zero, zero, one, the output, here we see that it's one. So we are going to choose our output to be one in this way. Let's put a one and it's connected. We are comparing just the output. We are using just this column of the truth table. We are not yet touching the borrow out column that it's one of the outputs of a full subtractor of one bit. Let's make one example more. We have the combination zero, one, zero, and we see that the output is one. So how we did it for the second input, we're going to make it for the third. It's another one. Let's go and say the other combination, it's zero, one, zero, and we see that the output is zero. So we're going to specify that our output is zero in the case that our selector has the input of zero, one, of zero, one, one. We have to be careful the order of the inputs that we have. It's not the same to have input as x, y, and b in. It's not the same as having b in, having y, and having x. The order will not be the same. So we have to be careful what order are we using our input selector. Okay, so we're going to finish this. Now let's do a max with our three inputs and in that different way for the B out output. So here I have my max, that is this one. And now instead of using three, a three bit selector, I will use just a two bit selectors. I will just use X and Y. So what will I do? I will identify the different combinations that I can have with X and Y. 
I have this combination 0 0 I have the combination 0 1 I have the combination 1 0 and I have the combination 1 1 if you analyze this every every one of these it's going to be our four inputs that we are going to use for our max. So if you can relate it, you can see that these different combinations are going to be our inputs that can be the outputs of our max. So let's see. In our zero zero combination, the B out it's can be zero or can be one. But we have another input that we are not using. We are going to use it now. So we have 0 and we have 1. So we can see that in the 0, 0 selector combination, the B in input is going to be the same for the B out output. So we are basically saying that in the 0, 0 combination, our our output is going to be the same as the input. So let's go to the other selector combination. We see that it's 0, 1. So let's see our input that it's going to be our list of inputs. We see that it's 0 and 1. And we see that the output, it doesn't matter what's borrowed in, the output will be always 1. So what are we going to do? We are going to put the constant 1 to be our our output. So let's have the other case. We have one and we have zero, that's our combination. And we see that the borrow in input is zero one. Let's compare it to the borrow out input. It's zero. It doesn't matter what what's the input, it will always be zero. So we are saying that no matter what, it's always going to be zero. Now let's have our last combination of the selector input for our max. We see that it's 0, 1, and we see that the borrow out is the same as the borrow in. So basically, we are saying that you are going to take the same. You are going to take just the same as the borrow in input. And who's going to be our selector? Well, it's going to be x, and it's going to be x and y. Sorry, it's going to be x and y. And the combination of our x and y, it's going to decide what are going to be our outputs for the borrow out in this truth table. So you can see that we can choose our number of inputs for the max. We can choose how many, how many how big it's going to be our selector. We can make a selector of three bits and fill it with constant, but we can see that that's maybe it's using many resources, maybe it's not that necessary. So we can look for a balance. So why not using a selector of two bits for our two inputs X and Y and use the borrow in <coughs> use the borrow in input to compare it to our borrow out output so we can we can do a play there and find the combinations and use a max that is much smaller it has a better performance than this max so what will happen if we decide that our number of selector of bits is going to be one you see that we have just two two options for the max so let's decide that our selector is going to be just x. So x just have two, two simple options, or it can be 0, or it can be 1. So we will have to compare all these combinations for the other input, compare it to our desired output. So in this case, we see that y and borrow in the zero, 0 will be 0, the zero, 1 is going to be 1, our one zero is going to be 1, and our one one is going to be 1. So if you analyze this and you can see it, you can see that 
our other inputs it's going to be it's basically an OR truth table if Y OR B in it's going to be our B out so to implement this we will have to to do this we will have to take our Y take our B in and just add an OR let's say we have this OR I'm going to connect this here and this here and this will be our first option for input so we will have to do the same for this to look at it and to compare it to our output and to decide what component can help me to reach this that in the zero zero, in the zero one, in the one zero it's going to be zero but in our one one combination it's going to be one as you can see it this is the end truth table so we will have to do the same just instead of an OR it will be an AND gate and don't remember that our selector bit it's going to be X so that's how MOXIES are implemented you can decide your selector size of bits but I recommend to always use a balance so of your input so if you have three you can use two for this selector and you can use one bit of the inputs as your as your options to be the final output